All right, thank you for tuning in. Uh, today we're going to be looking at the motion after effect. And this is something that uh, you're going to see uh, both in the field of sensation and perception, and you may also experience it in your daily life if you're driving or if you're even playing video games or things like that. So we're going to break it down in this video. But first I'm going to show you an illusion. I'm going to show you an optical illusion of the motion after effect. Uh, and then I'm going to talk about the neural basis of it. So what happens at a neural level? What goes on with these neurons and how are they active that allows this to happen? And then I'm going to talk about what in the world this has to do with daily life. So when on earth would you experience something like this in the real world? Okay, so like I said, first I'm going to show you uh, an, an optical illusion. And what I want you to do is whenever I show this, I'm going to, I'm going to, it's going to take up the whole screen. I'm going to focus on the middle. Just let your eyes relax on it. Just let your eyes, you know, just kind of focus and gaze on it. Don't stare too hard. Just let the images wash over you. Now, before I pull it up, though, I do want to warn that if you are very sensitive to bright lights uh, or, or strobe effects that this video, you may want to skip ahead the next two minutes or so. All right. So, I'll see you in a second. So that was that was pretty trippy, right? It's kind of weird, especially like if you look at your hand or if you look around, the world looks really swimmy, right? It's really kind of strange that you're able to do that without the use of, I don't know, recreational drugs or whatever. So to understand how this works, let's talk about what goes on at the neural level. It's important to keep in mind that our sensory systems are basically just change detectors. They're really good at detecting changes in our environment. Uh, so like whenever a light goes on or a light goes off or something like that or something enters our field of view or exits our field of view or something moves We're really good at detecting those kind of visual things or excuse me those uh, We're really good at detecting those kinds of changes in our environment and so um, This is gonna lead us into something we see in the visual system called adaptation and adaptation is basically whenever you have a neural response that kind of uh, gets used to a certain steady amount of information so let's look at what goes on with a neuron here. So before we experience any kind of motion in our visual field, we're gonna have neurons that are responsible for detecting changes in movement. And because there's no changes, because there's nothing moving, they're gonna be firing at a baseline level. They're gonna be firing at a regular steady, uh, you know, control, uh, uh, control level of activation. Once the motion starts, so once you see movement in the world around you, those neurons are going to start firing. They're going to start firing to let you know, hey, there's something moving around in the world in front of you. You should pay attention to it. And so those, uh, you know, those neurons are firing. But as that movement keeps going and it keeps going and it keeps going, what happens is that those levels of excitatory responses from that neuron are eventually going to start tapering off uh, because your sensory system is good at, de at detecting changes. And if there's constant movement like this, that's no longer really a change, right? It's just something that's, that's, uh, that's the constant state of things now. So once you stop that motion, so uh, once you uh, look away from that motion or once that, that movement is you know, uh, erased from the slide or erased from the video in front of you, it feels like things are still moving. Why is that? Be well, because if you think about what the neurons are doing, those neurons have now decided that that movement is the normal base rate. That's 
the normal constant now. Once you take away that movement, now your visual field is basically saying, hey, I'm detecting movement. I'm detecting something weird going on. But now it's going in the opposite direction. And it's all kind of relative because from the point of view of those neurons that are experiencing movement as kind of a constant. Once you take away that constant, it feels like everything is moving the other direction. To kind of think about it another way, think about if you, let's say, uh, spent you know, an evening upside down. So if you spent an evening upside down, you see the world initially as kind of inverted. You see it kind of reversed. You know that you're upside down. But if you spend the, the entire evening kind of like that, um, you're gonna start getting used to seeing the world that way. Once you kind of come right side up though, once you get back on normal ground, then everything feels kind of weird at first because you've adapted to that setting. You've adapted to being upside down. Your brain has made sense of it. And that's, some, that's basically what goes on with motion after effect. So when would you possibly experience this in the real world? You experience it a lot whenever you're driving. If you've been going, especially on interstates, if you've been going on a long road trip, uh, you get used to seeing the world kind of moving at you in a very constant rate. So at 70 miles an hour or so in a straight line on that interstate. You're moving and everything is kind of whizzing by you at the same rate. You got the lines on the road that are moving around the same rate and all this other stuff. If you pull off for a gas station or if you pull off on the side of the road, um, then everything kind of feels kind of weird and you might feel a little bit dizzy because now your body is detecting that there's a change going on and that you are moving, moving even though you've actually stopped because your brain has kind of gotten used to the fact that you're moving in, a, in one direction. Uh, and that's now become the constant. That's now become the baseline rate of things. Uh, so another example of this, uh, and this is a very personal example to me, is Guitar Hero. If you've ever played Guitar Hero or Rock Band, you kind of know how it works, right? You have these little buttons that are kind of moving down. Um, and if you're playing for a really long time, let's say a couple of hours, um, your brain gets used to seeing the world as kind of moving down in that direction. So I remember whenever, I don't know, whenever, whenever I was in college, I was playing Guitar Hero all the time. Um, and I played for several hours at a time, and then I stopped, and I, uh, and I looked around, and the world started creeping upwards. The world started creeping up, and it looked like kind of the floor was moving up, and the, the pictures on the wall were moving up, and it started freaking me out because I thought I had ruined my eyes. I thought I had, like, warped my brain from playing Guitar Hero so much. But, you know, after a couple of minutes, that went away. I didn't know until years later that was just the motion after effect that basically my brain had gotten used to seeing all these things cascading down that it had kind of assumed that that's the new normal. Once I eliminated that though, once I looked away from it, now my brain detected, oh, something is different. Remember, because our brain is detecting these changes in the environment. So that's the motion after effect in a nutshell. Uh, thanks for tuning in.